Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. The Bean Pod is presented by Dowmaker, the top crypto launchpad in the industry. Dowmaker allows people to participate in top crypto projects before they launch and generate some of the best returns you can find anywhere. They also provide growth solutions for crypto projects that are looking for funding and assistance with marketing. With their revolutionary new public strongholder offerings, everyone can get early access to top crypto projects regardless of their net worth. Dowmaker is rapidly disrupting the venture capital industry. If you're interested, head over to dowmaker.com to learn more. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be talking about the top NFT stocks. Because NFTs were one of the hottest sectors in the world at one point. Earlier this year, they were. Took over yeah. the world. So when the when the NFTs come back in and their utility is, is there, smack on, these stocks could explode. And I feel like everyone, you know, you associate NFTs with crypto, right? Okay, how do I invest in NFTs? You buy the NFT, you buy the crypto project that's making the NFT, but this is kind of a different angle. For people that maybe aren't into crypto, you can still have exposure to NFTs from publicly traded companies that are developing NFTs, making a marketplace, have partnerships within the NFT industry. So there's a lot of interesting companies in here. Definitely worth a listen. NFTs can be really complicated, really confusing. You know, I have to go into OpenSea. I need a wallet. You know, I have to pay gas fees. They're just silly JPEGs. So these are companies involved in the NFT space where you could see some returns from due to the revenue that these companies are going to generate from their NFT sales. Because if you have a project, for example, that has 10,000 blah, 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 you know, let's say you're a movie theater and you want to mint uh, tickets, right? And you release 10,000 tickets at $200 each, bringing in $2 million. There's a lot of extra revenue brought to these companies. Go go to the bottom line. It's another source. It's going to help their stock price. And another good thing about stocks that have exposure to NFTs is the institutions are buying these stocks, right? As we've covered on our podcast many times, because crypto is unregulated, institutions really can't buy crypto. They can't really invest in NFTs because it's just the Wild West. What they can do is invest in public companies that have exposure to NFTs and crypto. So a lot of these companies, when the market kind of comes back and NFTs, you know, kind of becomes more, more, more of a tangible thing, like they're making revenue from it as opposed to right now they're just building them. Um, these are going to be the companies that the institutional money could flow into, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so let, maybe let's jump through some of the ones. That I think we might have a few of the same companies on our list. Yep. We may not. Um, <clears throat> the first one I want to jump into right away was called DraftKings. Yep. Uh, trades under the ticker DKNG. Um, this is one of the only public companies in the world that has an NFT marketplace. Right. Which is, I found quite interesting. Yeah. You know, I mean, DraftKings is a great company. Yeah. It's fantasy sports, which we love. Um, they're working with all the top project or top, uh, athletes and leagues in the world, NFL, NBA, blah, blah, blah to make NFTs. Right. Yeah. So they're partnered with Tom Brady's uh, autograph. So they focus on digital sports collectibles. TB12, the GOAT. That's right. <laughs> Six time, I baby. Wish, I wish that guy didn't retire. <laughs> Man, I'm going to miss watching him play. He'll be back. So the, the autograph is pretty freaking sick, right? So it's this trophy room. And the NF, so you have to imagine going into this trophy room and you'll have your NFT moments like on display. And then you can show other people like, this is my trophy room. This is where I had Wayne Gretzky's 200th goal of the season or whatever, right? I like so, it. Pretty cool. Um, here's what I found really interesting. They had 70 autograph drops so far. Each one was oversubscribed by 14 times. Wow. So <laughs> that means there's 14 times the amount of people for the amount of NFTs that they had available. That's demand. People, right? people love these sports NFTs. Like, remember, I, I minted an NFT playoff pack, NFT moments or whatever it was called. And there was like, you know, 100,000 people in the waiting room for that thing. And there was like 30,000 packs. Yeah. People love it, these athlete NFTs. It's great. And, you know, you get to you get <laughs> that moment in time. You get to watch it over. And so it's not just a little card anymore. For so sure. So they're going to begin. DraftKings is going to begin minting their own soon. So that's why I want to bring these guys up. Yeah. Trading at around twenty dollars, they're at a previous high of seventy. So you know they're kind of being down. Start getting to the NFT space with sports. 
Can't Love go it. wrong. Love it. DraftKings is a great one. Another one that I have that you probably have too is Funko, F N K O. So they're like a massive, you know, old school toy collectible company. They've worked. They work with all the top brands: Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, the NBA. To make, I don't. Have you seen the bobbleheads they make? Have you yeah. go on the website? Yeah, like, yeah. You see those bobbleheads in every single toy store. It's like the big bobbly head. They're pretty fun. Mm. Um, so now they've. I think they acquired Token Wave, which is an NFT company. So they're going to be taking all these assets that they've already worked on with Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, blah blah blah, and minting them as NFTs. So they're they're fully going into the NFT space. And with those partnerships and an established brand, like they know how to sell toys and collectibles. This isn't some new startup, new crypto startup. These guys know what they're doing. Um, I think this is probably one of the, the top NFT stocks that I would I would look to put my money in. Yeah, and the great thing about this too is that they have a little something for everybody. You know, they have Jimi Hendrix bobblehead dolls. They have Batman. They have Ninja Turtles. So you can find something for everybody out there. You know, it's not just sports, like with DraftKings, for example. Right. Um, they're also super affordable. Their packs go for like 10 bucks. you know, so you're not minting a $150 JPEG on Ethereum or whatever. Well, because they, they're on Wax Protocol, right? Yeah. So the fees are a lot lower, a little bit, um, you know, lower barrier to entry for people that don't necessarily have that a lot, a lot of money. Yeah. So I think that's another thing that makes Funko a pretty cool, pretty cool stock. And with some of them too, you also, you'll get the NFT, but if you're lucky enough, you'll also receive the... You'll also receive a physical toy right. as well. So I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, I like how they pair that as well. Yeah. Uh, and they've also, another thing is they beat earning estimates on previous past five times. I like it. A uh, ton of buy ratings on that one. Oh, yeah, those are great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who you got next? <clears throat> this one's interesting, okay? This one's really, maybe, or maybe I should save it for the end. I like it. Maybe I should save this one for a little bit later in the episode. Now drop it now. I, I, I Okay, all right. So this one's Playboy. I love so, it. I love it. <laughs> Trade into the ticker PLBY. Um, Playboy's been around for a very long time, right? What, early 19, 1950s or something mm-hmm. like that? But they only recently recently went public in 2020. So it's, yeah, I feel like something that no one was talking about, right? Playboy going public and, you know, with all these meme stocks and everything that happened last year or whatever it was, very much under the radar. Super under the radar. Yeah. Yeah. So came public at ten dollars shot up to 50 bucks like it was so hot and then went down to 15 bucks somehow we didn't hear of it didn't make any videos on it i don't know why it would have been a banger that's for sure i posted about it in the discord once a long time ago (laughs) when the news of their nfts dropped right yeah okay so we're on to something here then i think right yeah um they're rebranding as like a lifestyle apparel sexual wellness company they're not it's not the, what, what's his name? Hugh, Hugh Hef. They're not Hugh, Hugh Hef's Hef. Playboy anymore? It's not Hugh Hef and his little robe and a bunch of chicks running around. It's, all right, now we're going to get, we're still staying with the sexual angle, but more on the wellness side of things, which I really like. Um, so here's what makes it really unique about this, these NFTs. It's the intellectual property that they have dating back to the 60s. Think about the content they have at Playboy. Yeah. So they have so much content available to them and, you know, in the sexual space, there's going to be a lot of people who want to obtain some of these. There might be some, you know, whoever just wants to buy some of these images, right? So I think they could, and it's interesting because I'm looking at the revenue, their earn, the revenue and the earnings doubled from nine, 20, 2019 to 2020. They're still, I think their 2021 results come out this uh, this month. Right. So if they can stay on that project trajectory, could be quite an interesting play. Did you see what the name of their uh, Genesis NFT drop was? What? The Rabbitars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Avatars, Rabbits. Yeah, so Love good. It. Yeah, Playboy's a great NFT stock. I like that one a lot. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I think it's I think Playboy, in terms of a stock that can get hot with the NFT drop, that's definitely one to put on the watch list for yeah, sure. Yeah, man. Um, another one that I think we've both talked about privately, it's it's been all in the news for NFTs, is Disney, right? Yeah. Um, so the ex-chairman, Bob Iger, came out, and he basically proclaimed that Disney is going to be going all in in the metaverse and NFTs. And just like what we were talking about with Playboy with content, think of all the content that Disney has. They are the content kings. All the worlds and movies and characters they've created over the last hundred years or however they've long they've been in existence. When they start dropping these things as NFTs, and you know, they're gonna integrate it into the movies, right? So, you know, I know it's Pixar, but Toy Story, like each character is an NFT and you can I'm sure they're gonna think of very creative ways to integrate these NFTs into 
you know, we talk about blockchain games a lot. These are blockchain movies, right? NFT movies. Mm. This is definitely going to be a thing. Um, they're doing it. Uh, I think there was an, an, a rumor news piece that came out that shows Disney's hiring for a bunch of NFT related positions in their right. company right now, just in this month, February. So, I mean, I, I think Disney, Disney's a company that I recently added to my portfolio um, for a number of reasons, but them getting into the metaverse and NFTs with, with their content in the, at the back of them, this looks like a winner. Yeah, I mean, especially when they are going all in on the metaverse and, you know, for new listeners out there, the metaverse will have a lot of NFTs within it, built into it. So, you know, you're going there and you might see a, a metaverse type of Goofy or Mickey Mouse or whatever, and you'll be able to obtain like your own little personal Mickey Mouse NFT, mm. which is quite cool. I think they I think they did some NFTs for The Simpsons and Frozen already. Yep, yep. Um, with, with a lot of success. They, you know, when they own the rights to Star Wars, Pixar, Marvel, this goes back to the Playboy one, for example. They have intellectual property. They have so much content, so so many NFTs that they can just drop to people who are really attached to these these films, right? Like when Toy Story came out, I was like, that was one of the funniest, coolest movies I've ever watched. And it's like, oh, you know, there's like that little soft spot. It's like, if I can get a little Woody or whatever it is, his name NFT, is. NFT, yeah, for you know, sure. A little NFT. I think that's super cool. Love it. Uh, and they do have patents for the metaverse technology of theme parks as well. Oh, yeah. That's a whole nother um, thing. The theme parks with the NFTs. Yeah. They got so much possible. Disney has probably some of the most creative possibilities to integrate blockchain and NFTs into their brand. I love it. Yeah, I know. Disney's a great one. What do you got next? Uh, AMC. You know, I like... To the moon, baby! <laughs> That's why I brought this one up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ape in. So, you know, the AMC short squeeze last year has like made so much of hype, so much hype around it. And the type of people who are involved with that short squeeze, I found they're also like the crypto investor as well. Risky. You know, they they are crypto investors. So it kind of ties in hand in hand. I like... The short squeeze occurred. They are crypto investors. We're talking about NFTs. It all kind of ties together. Um, so they are the largest movie exhibition company in the world with 950 theaters around the globally. I think with like 11,000 screens or something like that. Um, they gave away half half a million free NFTs to their shareholders uh, last year, which was really cool. You know, so it's a lot of the shareholders are already kind of starting to see what how these NFTs are going to be rolled out. And when you think about all the different movies that they have, you know, it's endless again. There's movies being released every single week. So this added revenue that can be brought in through AMC, I think, is going to be it's going to be quite big. I know they did uh, the Spider-Man No Way Home NFTs. And when they released them, the site crashed. Yeah, wow. So there's Huge a, a fan base is there. That's insane. Shit ton of... Uh, and it, they have Rentech is the biggest and best performing hedge fund companies in the world. They've been pouring money into AMC uh, over the past three quarters. I like it. I so like it. So I would definitely keep my eyes on AMC from an NFT perspective. Nice. I like it. Um, next one I have is Dolphin Entertainment. Ticker is DLPN. So they're already, a, they're already a big entertainment and marketing content production company that's been established in the past. They've recently launched their NFT division and they've partnered with FTX, one of the world's biggest crypto exchanges um, to start building out NFTs for major sports and entertainment brands. So when you take a company that already has the experience of being an entertainment and marketing company, they're partnered with, I think FTX is probably number two in the USA behind Coinbase. Um, and they're now they're, they're pulling in major sporting and entertainment brands. This is just a solid partnership for I mean, Dolphin Entertainment. No one knows about this stock. I mean, you know, unless you're really in it, I think this is a hidden gem. Um, so I would say, yeah, put Dolphin Entertainment on your list. Yeah, uh, I like that one a lot, actually. Uh, another one I had, it's it's more of a bigger one. So it's Shopify. So when you look at like an NFT marketplace, what are you doing on that? You are buying and selling goods, right? You have a you have an image or an NFT. At this point, there are, a lot of them are just images. Yep. And you want to sell it to me. What happens? It goes on the marketplace. I give you an offer. I buy it, whatever. Boom. Shopify already is that. Right? And it's one of the biggest e-com platforms in the world. And the way it's already designed, have you ever, I'm not sure if you've ever used Shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So yeah. it's like, you literally just drag a few things around and it's like, you have this beautiful looking website. So they already have a marketplace. They already have the ease of access, the 
they get rid of the coding and all that stuff that's necessary for uh, clients to make websites. So it's easy. So when you have all these content creators and individuals starting up their stores, for example, you have artists going on there, you know, like an Etsy or something like that. They can now just configure their NFTs, sell it super simple on one of the largest e coms platforms in the world. They're not doing NFTs yet, but I think this could be like one of those aha moments, mm. right? I dug into Shopify as well, and they actually stealthily launched the early stages of their NFT platform and integration in December. Right. Two months ago. Okay, so not long ago, right? So no one was, you know, it, it made no news. None. Because there's so, much, so many other things going on in the world right now with conflict and crypto and stocks are crashing. No one wants to touch these tech stocks, right? And meta and there's just so many other bigger headlines. They stealth launched the early beta version of their NFT integration into the Shopify platform. Beautiful. It's happening. They're yeah. hiring for NFT positions. And, and I am 100% on board with you. Um, I love the company. Everyone's using it. And e-commerce has taken a bit of a hit lately uh, as, as tech stocks have in general. Shopify got crushed on their latest earnings. So it's sitting in a buy zone, I would say. Look at, look at that chart. Wow. As long yeah. as I read, it went from 2,000 bucks down to 850. Yeah, this thing is, it's in despair. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a falling knife right now. But look, like Josh said, it's already one of the most used e-commerce platforms. It's a no-code platform. People can get into it easily and they have just stealth launched their NFT integration. Keep your eye on Shopify. I wouldn't sleep on I wouldn't sleep on them. Um, you know, I know they had a massive run up when COVID COVID hit, and basically so many people were moving online, starting up businesses. So they did see a lot of revenue. Yep. From that perspective, like even I had a little thing going on. Yeah, yeah. So, but now that people are going back to work and jobs and everything's opening up, I think they're just starting to see like a little bit. There's not as many people on the platform as often, so maybe their guidance changed a bit. For sure. But what they start introducing these NFTs. I like it. Let's go. I like That's it. Goodbye. I like it. Uh, all right. I got another one. This one is on o OTC, kind of penny stock gem. We've talked about it a lot in the past in mm. the Discord. Tapinator. Tapinator. Good old Tapinator, yeah. right? <laughs> you got to yeah. mention it. That was a good one. T-A-P-M. So they're basically kind of like the Netflix for NFTs, right? So they're building an NFT streaming content platform. Um, so it's a subscription casting and streaming software platform where you can get NFTs into commercial areas or your home. It's, it's a really unique angle. And if you think about all the, the digital content and videos and, you know, g gifts and moving images, everything that's NFTs, they're offering this as a streaming platform. So you don't actually have to buy the NFT to display it somewhere or something like that. I can see it working in businesses and stuff like that. Um, or, you know, if you have the service for your home and you want to display digital art, you can do it licensed with Tapinator. That those are the kind of use cases that they're building towards. Mm. Super small market cap, tiny. What the, the float was like? It's a, the float is so so. Anybody who's going to attempt to buy this because you can't buy it. <laughs> we did. We both had had this stock at one. Like a year are ago. you still holding it? No. Okay. Um, I remember getting into this thing around like ten bucks or so. The float is so tiny on it. So the market cap is eight mil. Super tiny market cap, but. When it, when it moves, when the NFT news comes out, like this company's been around for a little while too. They're founded in 2013. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's hard to buy shares. Yeah, so the, when, when Josh says the float, he means that there are a very small amount of shares. So when you put a buy order in to buy stocks, you have to buy them from someone. But if there's a very low amount of shares and no one's selling them, you can put a buy order in two bucks above the price is what, 15 bucks? You might not get no if no one's selling. Mm -hmm. So it's super hard to buy and also can sometimes be difficult to sell. Yeah. Right? So it's a tricky stock, but like as as Josh just mentioned, when the news hits, this thing can double. You can actually triple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, I like this. Yeah, stock. It, it's a risky <laughs> one. It's a fun one. I like I had to mention Tapinator. Yeah. Because yeah. you'll have a buy order in for like two days and it just yes, yes. it won't go through. And you're like, finally it's like, yeah, somebody sold me their shares. And it, it, it fills and two X's immediately. Yeah. And then you try to sell it and you can't sell it and it's gone zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, that's a good one. All right, what do you got next? Um, so my last one here on the list is Twitter. Yeah, I had Twitter too. Okay. So I find Twitter interesting. Again, it's like it's just another platform. Um, people want like what famous people have, you know, for example, like what, what makes a, a Nike NFT so much better than, uh, I don't know, like a new balance NFT. It's the fact that Nike has, you know, Jordan and, and LeBron and all these guys, right? Like it comes down to the attachment you have to the brand. Twitter has so many famous people on this platform, right? Like you have Elon Musk on there with 70 million followers. You have the president of the United States, like there's platformers for everybody. 
they're integrating crypto wallets, I believe, right? They have the tip tip for Ethereum yep. on there. And I Bitcoin, think that, yeah. Right? So they're integrating Ethereum and Bitcoin. That's right. <laughs> so they're integrating these onto the platform, right? So it's gonna make it easier for these NFTs to be passed around. And I think it's good. And then they already do the twi- um the profile picture. Yeah, so they've done they've integrated a verification service with OpenSea and NFT uh, platforms where if you own, you know, a really nice NFT and you put it as your profile picture, it verifies that you are actually the owner and it, it switches from a circle profile picture to like a, a octagon or a hexagon or something. Right. So you you know, and then you can click on the NFT and it brings you right to that page so you know that person owns it. So it's like a status symbol, exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. And I could see Twitter becoming an NFT marketplace, right? We know Jack Dorsey, the founder, loves crypto and NFTs. They're already, they've already got the integration in with the marketplaces. This is one of the biggest platforms in the world. Who's to say that you won't be able to sell your NFTs from your Twitter page and Twitter takes a cut? Like Twitter is probably one of the most under-monetized platforms really out is. of any social network, right? Facebook's crushing it with the ads, Instagram, even Snapchat's doing pretty good. Twitter, uh, we love the platform. I use it every day, probably more than any other social network, but they just have not been able to monetize the platform effectively that's why the stock price really hasn't seen that steady climb like facebook's has right yeah twitter i i love the platform nfts and crypto could be the thing that maybe I mean, that could be it successfully monetize that platform and there's so many crypto heads on there yeah you know sure. it's, a, it's littered with crypto heads nft yeah. guys and so it's a Definitely. big space for it yeah i would say keep twitter on your watch list for sure what else you got? Um, so I've got a couple of interesting ones, a couple of large caps, and then a couple of hilarious small caps I want to <laughs> I want to throw out before the end of the episode. So one of the large caps that I like, I own it. Um, I own it. I've owned it for a long time, not because of NFTs, but now I see they're getting into NFTs. Is Cloudflare? Yeah. Net. So they're basically like a cybersecurity slash cloud hosting company. Um, late last year, they announced something called Cloudflare Stream. So they're now bringing out a video streaming service with integration and support for NFTs. So that means that people that are building video streaming uh, websites, apps, anything to do with streaming on Cloudflare, which there would be millions of businesses that um, you know qualify for this new product of theirs, they're, imbe- or they're gonna have the ability to embed NFTs into the videos, which basically claims ownership rights and gets rid of pri- or piracy. Perfect. So people that are, you know, Pirate Bay, people are pirating videos, claiming things as theirs. All these videos are gonna be now NFTs. Right. It's just another integration of, the blockchain and NFT technology into making sure that people know who digitally owns things and who gets royalties for things. Mm. So we always talk about all the use cases of NFTs. We've done a podcast on that before, right? And video streaming, music streaming, all these things are hosted on Cloudflare. They're integrating NFTs right into the actual hosting on the platform. That's great. And then you also protected too from the cybersecurity side of things as well. Yeah, for sure. So Cloudflare is a great company, probably the best web hosting company there is. Um, the stock has gone down a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's trading at half of its all-time high. Yeah. Um, you know, but this is a company, you know, I put them on, I don't think, you know, I got like Sentinel-1, CrowdStrike, Cloudflare, Datadog. Yep. You know, they call, kind of all fall into the same sector, but I don't think the other guys are doing anything with the NFT space. So Yeah, for sure. Cloudflare is a good one. Um, do you need any more, any more or should I rattle off no, some No, rattle off caps? some, I want to hear some small right, caps. That's why everybody's in here for yeah, the small yeah. cap gems. It's all about the 100x small cap gems, all right? <laughs> so s- strap in. Strap in. Okay, so this is this is a really really weird one. It's called Wise Key. W- oh yeah, I came across those. You guys. came across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really interesting platform. Really interesting technology, right? So it's W Key W K E Y. Yeah. So they have a service they've built which authenticates and validates drone NFTs. So people are flying drones around and taking security footage, or maybe you know, for building, you know, they do building assessments with drones, or they do plot land assessments. Well, they're making all these things into nfts and they're they're actually semiconductor it's a semiconductor technology they're placing on the drones that it integrates into nfts it automatically all the footage is nfts and then they can be sold because you know that's a huge business yeah one of my buddies back from where i'm from started uh was part of the founding team of a company who they do drones for agriculture for businesses for buildings and this valuable stuff that they're getting with the drones right so those are now nfts Mm. it's not like you're you know fun digital JPEG or a blockchain game, but yeah. this is an integration into NFTs, which I found super interesting. Yeah, definitely. So did I. It's tr- it, This is like a buy the bottom opportunity. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's down 90% from its all time high. It's like a crypto chart. Yeah. <laughs> but the company has been around for a while. Like, it's been around since 1999. They do, they are in the sem- semiconductor business as yeah. well, which is a very 
sought after sector for many different reasons. It's an interesting one. This is very interesting. Yeah. This is a this is a, a this is a low cap gem. That's a low cap gem. And you want another you want another low cap gem that's absolutely bottomed out. I know we've talked about this one before, like maybe a year and a half ago. It's called Imagine AR. I think that might be a Canadian company. I think it's IP.CN on Canadian exchanges, probably something else on the OTC. Um, they're developing augmented reality NFTs. So they're kind of like some of the crypto companies we've we've covered in the past. They've got a mobile app out that actually allows people to create, you know, a biometrically scanned version of themselves as a 3D NFT to be used in the metaverse. And it's a publicly traded company doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the technology is really cool. The chart is absolutely in the pits. It too is down 90%. The <laughs> but this is a, this is what, okay. These are the type of companies though, where, you know, we've talked about Disney, Twitter, Shopify, Matt, um, Playboy, big companies that have been around for ages. This wouldn't be a bean pod podcast. Yeah. Without talking about a few low cap gems, Moonboy gems. This baby. is a this has a market cap of seven million dollars, uh, and <laughs> seven million. it has had a few massive spikes. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I it's a risky one. It's a risky one, but this is one. How it's a Canadian company too. So yeah, yeah, I like that. I wouldn't put. I would put a few bucks into something like this. I for like that. Sure. So those are some hilarious small cap gems. Risky, but you never know with these things. The last one I wanted to mention was there is an NFT ETF. NFTZ, NFTZ. Right. Yep. Uh, so it's NFT blockchain companies, which if you want to go the opposite of the small cap risky gems, an ETF is a much more you know risk averse way to get exposure to NFTs in the stock market. So yeah. NFTZ is a good thing to check out as well. Because then you get access, you get you know you, they'll have a, a it'll be a, a portfolio that has twenty different stocks in it that are all NFT yep. related. So for sure, instead for sure. of trying to pick the perfect gem. Yeah, those are good ones. Well, there's there's a lot of gems. We got some large cap companies that are getting into NFTs as well as some potential 100x bottomed out NFT technology that you would have never thought of. So there's a good list. If you want to do your research, if you guys have any ideas about cool NFT stocks that we should look at, check out the comments. Also, if you like our sweaters, which are pretty cool. Yeah, we've this, is like, this is my favorite sweater now. Yeah, one of our friends sent us these. Um, so we're going to drop the, the link to his website in the, the description of this episode. So yeah, check him out. Bitcoin, Ethereum. Love it. Love it. Hey, make sure you guys all tune into the next episode. Oh man, that's good because that one's going to be a fucking banger. Yeah. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.